Hey troops, welcome to the channel. This is Gen Dit Commando. My name is Ryan and I'm a former Royal Marine from the United Kingdom, guys. Today we're going to be reacting to why you never mess with a guard of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. I don't know a lot about this one, guys, but I've seen a few people reacting to it, so I decided to do the same myself. I think it's a United States-based military um, video, so we'll I guess we'll find out, guys. But uh, before we do, like, share and subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out. Enjoy. Get the, rail. the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier is one of the most continuously guarded monuments in the world. It's patrolled 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, regardless of the weather, by an elite regiment of soldiers known as Sentinels. These Sentinels are... Okay, right, uh, I'll be honest guys, I don't know an awful lot about the Sentinels, but they probably has got to be real badass hard cases to, to do such a job. Um, you know, they're guarding this thing 24-7, so respect. Highly trained specialist in superb physical condition, ready at a moment's notice to defend the honor of fallen war heroes. So what makes the old guard of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier so feared and respected? And what happens when people push the boundaries and try to mess with one of the guards? Let's find out. Well, my guess is from, you know, looking at the Coldstream guards, the Grenadier guards, um, you know, the, the, the Queen's Guard of the United Kingdom that, you know, they're not going to be messed with at all. They, they've got one job to do, that's protect, and that's exactly what they'll do, guys. I'd imagine they'd be um, very, very aggressive, but professional. That's what I'm guessing. The Old Guard is essentially ceremonial special forces, and despite their seemingly mundane job, they represent the very best of the best the army can offer. It's so elite that less than 20% of all volunteers are accepted for training, and of those, only a fraction pass training to become fully-fledged Tomb Guards. In fact, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier Guard Identification Badge is the third least awarded badge in the entire United States wow. Army, behind military horseman ID badges and astronaut badges. To become a tomb guard, an old guard soldier must volunteer by applying for appointment to the tomb through the sergeant of the guard. To be considered for an appointment, the soldier must be highly motivated and disciplined, and possess a strong military bearing and soldierly appearance. If appointed, the soldier... I'm guessing that they've... these guys have got badges, so I wonder if they have to have kind of military service before you get into this. It would make sense if you have to be so elite to have had that kind of previous military experience all right and you want to kind of transfer across to this job but um yeah i'm really surprised at that less than 20 percent make it through i mean that's uh that's quite a statistic guys all right these guys are are quite unique that's definitely must be said like Soldier is assigned to the tomb for an initial two-week training period. Upon reporting to a relief, the trainee is assigned a tomb guard trainer. The trainer informs the trainee of what is expected of them, including following strict rules, training guidelines, and the need for complete dedication and commitment to the tomb. The training cycle is intense, consisting of a series of five exhaustive tests over six to twelve months. These tests focus on ceremonial performance, uniform preparation, and knowledge. If the trainee completes the training cycle and passes the test, they are able to flawlessly conduct seven different types of ceremonies, meet the highest standards of uniform preparation, and recite 35 pages of information without error. If the trainee fails... <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling that straight away, guys. When it comes to memory, anything like that, I'm pretty terrible, to be honest with you, unless it's got a physical kind of interaction. You know, the Royal Marines is very physical. I remembered things because it was linked to something physical. I could be aggressive with it, but yeah, point blank, ref <laughs> you know, trying to recite anything verbatim to that degree, 35 pages, yeah, that would be extremely hard for anyone fails any test, they are assigned back to their company. The successful trainee is awarded the Tomb Guard Identification Badge, and will be from then on referred to as a Tomb Guard or Badge Holder by their fellow Sentinels. Demonstrating how serious a role this is considered to be, the Tomb Guard Identification Badge is the only military badge that can be revoked for any action that brings disrespect to the tomb. The Unknown Soldier 
On the 11th of November 1921, the remains of an unknown American soldier were returned from the battlefields of France. Unidentified remains weren't uncommon during World War I, and without DNA profiling or reliable ways to match the list of missing soldiers with the discovered corpses, many bodies were simply marked as unknown. For this reason, the U.S. government approved the construction of a memorial in the Arlington National Cemetery in Virginia, United States. This would be the final resting place of the returned unknown soldier and would serve as a monument to all deceased military personnel who were either lost or the remains never identified. The remain Wow, I've got so much respect for that, guys. The fact that you're dedicating an area for the unknown, for the glorious dead, as we would say. I have so much respect for that. I went to Normandy with the Royal Marines and I got to see all of the graves over there from both sides of the war, okay? And, um... It was, it was startling, guys, to see so many graves in front of me, some of them were unknown as well. And, uh, yeah, my massive respect to each and every one of these individuals who fought and died for our freedoms, guys. The remains of the unknown soldier were interred beneath a three-level white marble tomb covered in a stone slab. Intricate carvings decorate the sides, including wreaths and figures representing peace, victory, and valor. The rear of the sarcophagus includes an inscription which reads, Here rests in honored glory an American soldier known but to God. Why you shouldn't mess with a tomb guard. While the role of the sentinel is mostly ceremonial, there are some things you just don't do when visiting the tomb of the unknown soldier. The old guards will appear strong and silent, that is, until you break one of their rules. Cross over the barrier into the plaza and you'll probably hear this. It is requested that all visitors remain behind the changing rails at all times. Remain behind the changing rails. Okay, yeah, first is a kind of a warning, um, a verbal warning. If that doesn't scare you, then you're stupid. You know, a military guy with a deep voice with a weapon system in his hand. You're gonna, you're gonna stand to pretty quickly, aren't you? Respect and silence is required at all times. If you're being loud, rude, and obnoxious, you'll likely get this response. Remain standing for this ceremony. It is requested that everyone maintains a level of silence and respect. It is requested that everyone maintain an atmosphere of silence and respect at all times. These sentinels are very similar to the Queen's Guard. At yeah, fair one, guys. You got to remain respectful in this situation. You know, you're there not for for a laugh about. All right, you're not there for a joke about with your buddies or to take pictures or to take the mick. You know, you're there for a serious reason to pay respects to the tomb of the unknown soldier. It's simple as that. If you haven't got the you haven't got the brain cells to understand that, then you don't deserve to be there in the first place. Okay at Buckingham Palace. However, they aren't trained to remain still at all times. Get too close and the Sentinels will gladly point their M14 rifle straight at you. They aren't messing about. Day in the life of a tomb guard. The old guard is made... Just a quick, quick correction there. The Queen's guard aren't, aren't, aren't trained to stand still at all times either. All right, it's... Um... It's a it's a myth, all right? If you go and see them, you'll see that they do actually move about as well, all right? Maybe it's not as much as these um, fine young men and women, but they certainly do move about and provoked they will um, use force, sometimes deadly. Made up of three tomb squads or reliefs, numbered first through to third. Unlike traditional army units, tomb reliefs are organized based on height, so that the tomb guards are similar in size during the changing of the guard. The three reliefs are on duty, utilizing 24-hour rotating shifts. A tomb guard's day begins at 5 a.m., with arrival at the tomb quarters 1 for duty. The tomb guards will inspect the quarters, prepare their uniforms, review orders, and receive their duty assignments for the coming day. At 6.30 a.m., the tomb guards inspect the trainee's readiness and uniforms. If a trainee meets relevant standards, the tomb guard may allow them to walk the first morning guard change known as bolo at 7 a.m. The evening bolo will be the final change and walk of the day. During the hours of the day, the Arlington National Cemetery is open to visitors. The tomb guards will perform several changing of the guard and wreath laying ceremonies and walking the mat. During summer hours, the changing of the guard ceremony takes place every half hour, and during winter hours, every hour. Although 
all walks are important, the most coveted walk for a tomb guard is the midday noon moon walk. During the same time, the trainees perform mirror time, conduct uniform preparation, study knowledge, check in wreaths, and alert the tomb guards of the next changing of the guard. Ten minutes. While guarding the tomb, sentinels do not display rank insignia. This is done so as not to outrank the unknown soldier, whatever. Wow, okay. That's really impressive. They saw the respect, the level of diligence that they've got through this, the thought pattern, all right, the mindset of those who who are behind the the um the preparation for this have decided to not even wear a rank slide just in case the the, the the person who was buried there had a had a, a higher low rank it's to not outrank them the respect there is phenomenal guys that's really really good man whatever their rank may have been the tomb is guarded 24 hours a day and 365 days a year so after the evening bolo no ceremonial changes and walks in battle dress uniforms are performed until the next morning's bolo guarding the tomb in March 1926, the U.S. decided to post a permanent guard over the tomb of the unknown soldier. Soldiers from the nearby Fort Myers, members of the 3rd Cavalry Regiment, nicknamed the Brave Rifles, were first assigned to guard the tomb. At first, they were enlisted only during daylight hours and served just to discourage visitors to climb on or disrespect the monument. By 1937, guarding the tomb became a round-the-clock job, and on April 6, 1948, the 3rd U.S. Infantry Regiment known as the Old Guard Guard was designated as the Army's official ceremonial unit, tasked with guarding the tomb of the unknown soldier. Old Guard Myths the Tomb Guard Sentinels have a bit of an intimidating reputation, and it's all thanks to some pretty fantastic urban myths that have surrounded the Old Guard for decades. Fortunately, we're here to separate fact from fiction. According to one urban legend, Sentinels live for two years in a barracks under the tomb and are not allowed to swear, watch television, or drink alcohol for the rest of their lives. Fortunately, this is completely false, and members of the Old Guard are allowed to indulge in the occasional off-duty vice. And finally, I was going to say, guys, yeah, it, it, when we're talking about the military here, when it comes to a, a drinking ban, we always try to break it. It doesn't matter what you're doing. When I was in the Marines, we always we always broke drinking bans. I'm, I'm, I've got some hell of a stories, guys. All right, but um, yeah, I probably can't even can't even mention those on on here. Finally, it was once rumored that during Hurricane Isabel in 2003, the tomb sentinels refused orders to abandon their post, despite the inclement weather and perished in the storm. While it's a cool story, it's also bogus. While the tomb requires 24-7 guarding, contingencies are in place in case of lightning, high winds, or torrential conditions. What do you think of the guards? Let us know in the comments below. Leave a Guys, I'll be honest with you, I think these guards are absolutely fantastic. I have a lot of respect for anyone who serves the military, but if you want to dedicate your time to guarding the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, then I've got nothing, nothing but complete respect for you, all right? You, for me, it's the most honourable job you can do in the military. It's, um, yeah, I've got a lot of respect, guys. That was a fantastic video. I've got a lot of respect for that. If you do too, please drop a like, share, and subscribe. Drop me a comment. Let me know how you feel. Have you been there? Have you met this? Um, the, the, have you been to see this tomb? Have you met the guards? Let me know, guys.